Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. This is actually the first video you'll see of 2020. So I'm wishing you all a very, very happy new year before we get going. And uh, what I want to talk about today is how, or basically, what are greys in colour? Why do we talk about greys? And grey is basically any amalgam of our primary colors which are blue yellow or red and it can be so many blue reds and yellows across the board uh, but any combination of those will create a corrupted primary or a corrupted secondary color so of course we all know that there are primary colors blue red and yellow we also know that uh, if you mix two of those together you do get a secondary color which in itself can be a very, very pure blend of color. But the moment we add one of the other colors to that, we, or in other words, we put three colors, the three primaries together in any amount of uh, degrees, then we corrupt all of that and we start to dirty the color. And then it becomes a gray. Now I had it once said to me uh, that um, when you look at a painting, Think of, that. there's a sort of a, a, a way that you can think about this, that if you think of our primary colors and indeed our secondary colors as the major organs of our body, but all of those organs are helped, kept in place by all that connective tissue that holds them there uh, for the duration, I hope, of our lifetime. Well, if you think of all our primary colors in a painting, they are connected by all the many myriads of connective tissue in the form of greys. So if we were to paint a picture purely of primary colors or secondary colors, it does assault the eyes quite a lot. Now, there are obviously some uh, abstract painters or modern painters that will paint in just primaries or, or, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. What I'm actually saying is that for the most of us, when we paint a picture, we paint a whole assembly of different colors from bright colors, primaries, our secondaries, but also our grays. And it's those grays that really set up all those primary colors. And let me give you a few examples. If I take a nice red, don't worry about this line through here. It was a secondary bulb, which I can actually later paint on again. But let's just take this lovely red color. Okay, let's just put a fair bit out. And it's a really, really strong, nice red. Take another brush. And I'm going to add into that maybe some blue. Now this is cobalt blue. Uh, sorry, cobalt blue. This is ultramarine blue. My apologies. Now, the thing is that colors also have relationships and that will be subject maybe of another video because there are detailed relationships between all these colors. Some of these colors have other factors in them that's, that uh, link them, um, but I don't want to confuse the issue right now. So let's just go in with a bit more blue and to that end, I'm going to use yet another brush and I'm going to put in some cobalt blue, like this. Okay. Now then, if I was to mix the blue here and this red, you're going to get a very, very dirty purple. Now, blue and red, we all know, should make purple. But in this case, look at it it's really not making anything like purple. It's making a very, very dirty purple. Now, if on the other hand, I use, uh, I forgot the right brush in my hand. Yes, let's go here. This too is making a very dirty purple. Okay, so neither of these blues are working with this cadmium red. So now let's just change the red and then we'll put a different aspect to this because what I've just shown you is that uh, the blues have got other colors in them. This blue here should have had, it's got more yellow in it. So it really doesn't work because it doesn't have that lovely um, 
warmth to it. And this red has got a lot of yellow in it. So when you mix it with this blue, which doesn't have any yellow in it, if, stay with me. <laughs> if it, if the, the ultramarine blue is uh, sort of a very warm blue, it has a lot of dark, deep magenta reds into it, so it doesn't act in the same way. But if you act and put that with the cadmium red, then of course the red's got yellow in it. So what you've actually done is you've introduced red, yellow, and blue. However small those uh, little changes are, they will affect the outcome, and you get a very dirty purple. So let's change our red. Let's just go into this one. This is a lovely magenta. Now you can use alizarin crimson just as easily, but I choose to use magenta these days. Now let me just clean these brushes out because they are contaminated. So let's just take anything out of there that I don't want in. And the same with this one. Okay, now let us go in with some of that blue again. This is ultramarine. And the other one was the cobalt. Now you should see that this will now make a much better purple, deeper and more vibrant and strong. So now when you will look when you're looking at color relationships, the, the fact that this red doesn't have yellow in it, it keeps the transition more pure because these don't have the uh, yellow constituent and, and, and cobalt has such little, it really doesn't make a big difference. So you are going to get this beautiful, beautiful purple. But here, of course, with the big strong yellow in the red, you're just not gonna get that. So any uh, change here is going to make a big, big difference to you. Now let's look at the same situation when we're talking about orange and we'll use the red again, this lovely magenta. And now I'm going to use yet another brush because what I want to do now is add some cadmium red light again. Now remember, this has got a lot of blue in it and making it very, very cool as a red, but this blue being in there is actually making this blue very, very warm. So this red has got a lot of yellow in it. It's very fiery, very bright, very hot, and therefore makes it um, a sort of very, very warm red as opposed to the cool red. Now then, let's just go back in and we will choose to use some cadmium yellow deep just as an indication. Let me just put these two together and you're gonna get an orange. But you've gotta look at that orange and see how degraded that orange really is. Now let us just check out here and clean this brush. Don't wanna contaminate it. All right. Now let us go in with the same color yellow here and let us just go into that red on this one. Now, instantly, you can see how that orange is so pure, and this one is very degraded and very dirty. Now, if you've only got these two colors on your board, that is the best orange you can possibly make. But if you have the two on your board, then you have the option to make a really pure orange or a real dirty orange and the reason this is dirty because this red's got an element of blue inside so that's what corrupts it and you can keep these relationships going on all the time so what i said right at the start why grays well if i were to put together a painting that had just this color and maybe the bright orange color or this one here, like so, next to that one. And let's say the yellow here. And for argument's sake, let us say, let's 
corrupted let's get out of the brush go through so many brushes with this um and let's just say a vibrant blue then all of a sudden all these colors here if my painting just consisted of primaries and strong secondaries then it's a really really loud painting and it doesn't sit well when we're looking at it so what we need to do is use corruptions of color for instance let's pick up some of this red and we'll lose that color but now we can actually start putting in other values that are corrupted versions and they will help support because they take the pressure off the the loud chroma that a primary will give you a really exciting color but you can degrade that by adding uh all three colors red yellow and blue together in some form and then you can further augment that by adding whites in to further corrupt the gray or make it a lighter gray but it does help support the painting that we're doing now what you're seeing here as we just wind this very quick little indication or tutorial up is the fact that I've got two types of gray going on here. Forget how light or how dark, i.e. the value or tone of that gray is. At this point in the exercise, we're not really worried about that. What I'm trying to show you here is that we have two types of gray. We have a corrupted cool gray, lots of blues, lots of coolness about it, and we have a corrupted warm gray. So further to having just gray support all these primary colors what we also have is the ability to look at how warm or how cool we wish that gray to look so it really does depend on the painting we're doing but it might be that shady areas shadow areas that don't have brilliant highlights of bold color within them will have all various manners of gray pigments within them but we still have to observe how warm or how cool or how light or how dark each of those grays are. Out of context, they will not read correctly across the painting and therefore the whole painting will not work. So there are still many things to observe when you're doing this, but at least you understand, I hope, from this very quick uh, little intro into why grays is the fact that we have got um, these the ability to create all these subtle differences of color that give us all the different shadows and sub primary colors i.e. tertiary colors where all three of the primaries are involved in one degree or another and that is what makes a gray color now obviously gray in terms of tone doesn't mean the same as that that I've been talking about here. But just half, just touching on that point, that a gray tone, i.e. black through white, somewhere between nine and two, if you had a scale of 10 in, in the black and white line, uh, one of the these will appear somewhere as a area. They're not white and they're not black. They are somewhere in between and that's why I call them and many others call them a gray and they have a position on that scale but they are neither black nor white and nor are they as pure as a primary or a secondary color so I hope that little bit has been helpful to you it's very very hard because it's a massive subject and to try and do something in such a very short space of time is not easy to do. Um, so I think that I will touch upon this subject in and come from it in different directions uh, over a period of time. I don't want to assault you all with all the information at once, but certainly over a period of time, we'll come back and revisit this little exercise and we'll probably expand upon it and we'll look at complementary colors, how they work, why they work, and many other aspects to color and this information so until that time um, enjoy your painting hope you've got something from this and if you have click that um, thumbs up button at the bottom of this video and share it with your friends they may well find this information a little helpful 
And if that's the case and you do like my channel, you watch the content fairly regularly, but if you're not a subscriber, please, in 2020, become a subscriber. Click that subscribe button now. It really does help me know that the channel is being supported by people. We're growing all the time and I do thank uh, all my recent subscribers and all my existing subscribers. Subscribers, I get it right. Um, all my existing subscribers and all my new ones. I thank you all ever so much for the support you've shown the channel so far. And I do hope that many more of you watching this, if you're not subscribed, will click that red icon there that says subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it does at least let you know when I'm uploading a new video, which at the moment is still every Friday. Something new will come out. And I wish also during the course of 2020 to add more how to's in terms like this of techniques, but also other mediums branching back out into pastels maybe and acrylics and other things. So watch out for those and I look forward to your company next Friday and next week's video. All the best for now. Happy painting. All the best. And Happy New Year once more. Bye bye for now. Bye.